Hi, I'm Mick from American Air Cannons, and today we're going to be building a MBTS-30 t-shirt launcher. So uh, when you get your box in the mail, it's going to look something like this. So just open your box up. You're going to pull out your chamber, your barrel, and a box of parts. Go ahead and get that box out of your way. These are the main parts of the cannon right here. Your sprinkler valve should have a bag that has a trigger, a Schrader valve, a nipple, and your pressure gauge, a ring, miscellaneous parts for putting it together, and we can just get, discard all these boxes and get those out of our way. So, first thing I like to do is I'll pull out the sprinkler valve. And this is an Orbit Watermaster 3 quarter inch sprinkler valve. You can get these at Home Depot anywhere. Go ahead and dump the box, you're not going to need that. And as you can see, this is the part that ignites it. We're going to get rid of this as well. We don't need this. We'll toss that out. So I've got a regular Phillips screwdriver here. This is a ratchet drive. And what I'll do is I'm going to pull the cap off this. You have eight screws on here. So pull all the screws off, careful not to lose them. So this is real easy to pop off. What I do is I just hold the valve this way and I put my finger over this part and I just pop it open and it pops apart and as you can see that's all there is to it. There's just three parts. The spring is very important, don't lose it. So we're going to set these off to the side here. Go ahead and open our bag of parts here. Now the first thing I do is I'm going to drill this out and I'll show you it's real easy to do. Okay so what we're going to do is we're going to take a half inch drill bit and we're going to drill out the hole for the trigger. Real basic. What I do i got a little drill press right here. I'm going to put in my half inch bit. Tighten it down. I like to have something that holds the cap so it doesn't twist in your hand. It's, it's a little more safety involved. So what I do is I put it in upside down into this little vise here. Make sure it sits flat. I'm going to line it up under my drill press. Start my drill. And I just go real slowly, just take my time. slower you go the better drilling you're going to get. It's going to be a real nice clean hole and it's not going to grab it and jerk it around and warp the hole. Now the next thing I do is I went to Home Depot and I bought this little 7 16 die tap. So it's just NPT thread and I'll just get it started in there. I'm going to pull out my 7 16 box end wrench, get it on the end of that little pipe tap and I'm just going to do on and off twisting motion here and I'm going to thread the hole for my trigger assembly. You don't want to do it too, too deep or too wide. These things are tapered so the farther you go the bigger the hole gets. I go about three quarters of the way down on this 7 16 and that seems to be just about right. You get a nice snug fit without making the uh, nipple stick in too far because if it goes in too far it's going to push against that diaphragm and you'll get a leaky gun. So, pull out our pipe tap and as you can see we've got a perfect hole here tapped with our 7 16 pipe tap and now we have a perfectly threaded receiver 
for our nipple. So I'm just going to stick the nipple in here and it should screw right into place. Just like that. So the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to fill this hole with some JB Weld. We're also going to fill this hole with some JB Weld. So let's mix up a little batch of that right now. Now if you don't have uh, JB Weld, you could use something like a stick and seal here, which is a waterproof adhesive, or you could use some uh, silicone or anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill up both of these holes. Um, the little trigger thing here, on or off, doesn't matter. You can leave it straight up and down, you can leave it to the side. I put mine to the side, because I know that's shutting the valve off. And I'm just going to throw a nice, nice wad in here. Tamp it down in there so you get a good seal all the way around. And I'm going to put another little bit into the hole next to it. We've got to make sure both of these chambers are sealed. So make sure you put a nice, nice little load in there. So while that's drying, let's put the rest of this thing together here. So the next thing I do is I take the cap. Now on this cap, we know that we're going to have, according to our directions, we're going to have the Schrader valve or the air fill valve is going to be sticking out the front of this thing. So we're going to need to drill this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out these, uh, the bits here. I'm going to put a, put a quarter inch bit in here. Um, this one you want to be really careful about. You need some sort of clamp to hold it down. I've got one of these little uh, pipe clamps that I use. So line it up with the center. Make sure your pipe clamp's got it nice and secure. Same thing, we're just going to drill this out and just take your time. Drill it slowly so you get a nice smooth hole and the thing doesn't jump around on you. You can see as you're done, end up with a nice smooth hole here. Now with this guy, we can self tap this with a quarter inch Schrader, Schrader valve here. So we're just going to line that up in the hole, make sure it's straight, give it a twist, get it started. And again we're going to use our 7 16 box wrench, give it a good twist on there. and it'll, it'll thread itself right into the hole. I'm going to set it down here so I have some leverage. And just take your time so you don't strip it. You don't need to put any uh, Teflon tape or anything like that on it. It has a pretty good seal by itself as long as you drill a nice smooth hole without it jumping around. That's what's so important about having that that pipe holder there. So, there it is. Got your Schrader valve all set. So now what we do is we would glue this piece onto the end of the chamber here. This is your 12